I think it's fair to say that without the music, Minecraft wouldn't be the same. The original soundtrack is truly iconic and a huge nostalgia trigger for everybody that grew up with the game. Therefore, it's kind of crazy that this critically acclaimed and highly impactful music was created by a relatively inexperienced composer in his early 20s. In this video, I want to talk about him. C418. How he got into composing game soundtracks, why he stopped making music for Minecraft and what he's up to today. C418's real name is Daniel Rosenfeld, and like me, he's from Germany. It is largely due to the influence of his bigger brother that he got into computers and video games at a relatively young age. His brother also introduced him to Ableton. Until my brother said that he found this program called Ableton, it's so easy that even idiots can make music with it. And he didn't know it at the time, but I felt I was an idiot. I seriously did. So I tried it out. Making music became a hobby for C418, and over the course of a few years, he got pretty decent at it. Around the same time, Daniel also got into indie games and the communities based around them, like TIG Source. He spent a lot of time talking with members of this community, and eventually met a guy named Marcus, better known as Notch who had this idea for a block-based video game. They teamed up to work on what became Minecraft, and the rest is history. Minecraft is arguably the most popular game of all time, and its initial success was largely due to how incredibly unique it was. The game broke with many, if not most, conventions at the time. There was no storytelling and no world-building, no set goals and no ending. It encourages people to use their own imagination. It's, it's not linear at all. It's not, you know, go to this point and do this and go to this. But, you know, use your imagination and go wild and, and see what you can create. C418's music for it was also relatively special and counterintuitive. Even though the art style is pixelated, the music wasn't composed in the 8-bit style that is characteristic for this look. Instead, his songs were peaceful and very melodic instrumentals that fit perfect with the calm and creative nature of Minecraft. Because we can't really predict anything, how about we just have general music that doesn't really say anything, is maybe a little bit like uh, melancholic, but that doesn't really mean it's sad, it's just, it's just like a mood space. When the game was initially released in 2011, he was only 22. But because of Minecraft's quick success, he was able to quit his job as an assembly line worker and fully devote himself to making music for the game. Within the next few years, he created two albums, Volume Alpha and Volume Beta, which are the classic soundtrack Minecraft is known for. In 2017, Daniel announced that he was working on a third album, Volume Final, which would be longer than Volume Alpha and Volume Beta combined. In total, that clocks in at over 3 hours and 18 minutes. His fans were waiting excitedly, and in 2021, C418 stated that he had finished this new music, but sadly it never made it to the game. I have something, I consider it finished, but uh, things have become complicated, especially because Minecraft is now a big property, so I don't know. The answer is I don't know. Uh, and I think I can't talk much more than that about that. It appears that there was a conflict of interest between him and Microsoft regarding the rights of ownership to the music. And even though no exact details of their argument are public, the YouTuber Sal C1 did a decent job at explaining how it probably came to be. You see, with big gaming publishers, it's common practice to pay a composer a fixed amount of money in exchange for music and the legal rights to it. This way, they hold all the power over how and when a game's music can be used. Between Notch and Daniel it was different. They agreed on C418 keeping the rights to his music back when Minecraft was still in development and they kept to it even after the game's immense success. Microsoft likely didn't want to keep operating under these conditions, so instead they hired new composers that were willing to sell the rights to their music. These new additions to the Minecraft soundtrack emulate C418's style to a certain extent, but in my opinion it's not really fair to criticize that since the new songs of course should fit in with the rest, and in some ways 
the new composers are experimenting and doing their own thing. In general, it's of course kinda sad that Mojang and C418 split ways, but on the other hand, I think both sides profit from this change. Minecraft can take the soundtrack in new directions and give small composers a platform, like it did with C418, and Daniel can challenge himself working on new projects, which is exactly what he's doing. In 2021, he founded his own game studio with Davy Vrieden, who's best known for the standard Parable, and Carla Simonia. If you really are a true gamer, name 10,000 games. Oh man, well, I mean, honestly, there's like uh, Final Fantasy 1 through 10,000. <laughs> okay, actually, that's. I didn't expect her to get that right. It's called Ivy Road, and they're actually launching their first game, Wonderstop, this year. It looks very promising, and in the trailer you get a first glimpse of the music C418 composed for it. Of course, I have to actually serve the tea to our customers. And once that's done, I'll usually check in with Boro, the guy who owns the shop, to see if my help is needed anywhere. So, it seems like he's doing pretty good, and I only wish the best for him and Ivy Road. If you want to learn even more about Daniel, I recommend checking out his website or Twitter. He posts cool stuff. <laughs> Alright, if you're interested in learning about an artist who's less calm and nice, go watch my video on Uwe Boll. That guy is bonkers. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and have a nice day.